Thank you, Lizen. Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Griffon Ryan from Orient Capital. We are an investor relation advisor to the company. I hope that all of you and your families are safe and healthy. On behalf of East My Trip Limited, I extend a warm welcome to all participants on Q4 and FY22 financial results discussion call. Today on a call, I am joined by Mr. Prashant Pitti, co-founder and executive director, and Mr. Ashish Bansal, chief financial officer. I hope everyone had an opportunity to go through our investor tech and press release that we have uploaded on exchanges and on companies' website. Before we begin with the call, I would like to give a short disclaimer. This call may contain some of the forward-looking statements, which are completely based upon our beliefs, opinion, and expectation as of today. These statements are not guarantee of our future performance and involve unforeseen risks and uncertainties. With this, I hand over the call to Mr. Prashant Pitti, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Irfan. Thank you. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Today on the call, I'm joined by Mr. Ashish Mansal, who is the Chief Financial Officer of the company and also the Orient Capital, as you know, our investor relationship partners. Well, year 2022 was a remarkable year for OTA industry and for ease market. OTA platforms have gained popularity and acceptance driven by the rapid spread of internet services, smartphone usage, and by providing one-stop shop for travel-related bookings at competitive price points. The online penetration, defined as a share of bookings done through online captive websites for the service provided or the OTA, for Indian travel industry accounted for 56 to 58 percent for FY20. Further, it is expected that the share of online penetration of Indian travel industry is expected to increase to 67 to 68. Ladies and gentlemen, the lines of the management has got disconnected. Please stay connected while we reconnect the management. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently holding. We now have the line for the management reconnected. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, the the online penetration for Indian travel ex industry is expected to increase to 67 to 68% in FY23, supported by the growth in online transactions. In the online segment, OTA have a significant share in air ticketing as compared with captive websites of the airline. The distinct advantage offered by OTA over captive websites is that they allow multi-airline itineraries. OTAs are also in position to offer relatively higher discounts than captive sites. Over the past 13 years, EasyMyTrip has taken pride in being a customer-centric company and focused on efficiently catering to the rising needs of consumers and offering wide range of value-added services, a practice that has remained unhampered during the course of pandemic as well. Ismat became one of the fastest-growing OTA and has invested in technology to become more user-friendly, which has helped us gain customer loyalty. Tie-ups with various banks and payment channels have ensured competitive pricing across the segment. Going forward, the industry is expected to gain further transactions on online booking across the various segments. Crystal Research estimates Ladies and gentlemen, the lines of the speaker has got disconnected. Please stay connected while we reconnect the speaker. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently holding. We now have the line for the speaker reconnected. Over to you, sir. Uh, hello, everyone. I apologize for the line getting disconnected. I am in Davos right now for the World Economic Forum. So it might be a you know, bouncy line for me right now. But we will have to investigate that later. Let me continue. So the crystal research estimates that the OTA industry would grow at a pace of CAGR of 9 to 11% to reach 130 to 150 billion dollars by the financial year of 2025, driven by the changing consumer preference and technological advancement. Also, the government of India will likely to add, will likely to have between 190 to 200 operational airports by 2040, nearly two times of the current level. In addition, the international airports will also double from 34 in 2018 to 70 by 2040. The commercial fleet is expected to go up from 695 aircrafts in 2020 to 1,200 by 2027, based on pending delivery. And touch, and it may touch 2,539 aircrafts by 2040. India has among the largest pending deliveries at the at to close over. 585 aircraft. Moreover, measures related to the privatization Ladies and gentlemen, the line for the management has got disconnected. Please stay connected while we reconnect the management.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently holding. We now have the line for the speaker reconnected. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, I have changed the other number. Let's hope this works. Uh, thank you, everyone, for waiting patiently. So let me continue. Moreover, measures related to the privatization of airports and allowing 100% SDI in airport infrastructure should help in driving the expansion. Keeping the various emerging opportunities in mind, we continue to the effort of global expansion. The company has successfully established its corporate office in Dubai and will further look in opening corporate offices in UK and US markets. In addition, the company will also look to develop a fintech arm to provide customers with buy now, pay later option. The company has well positioned itself to capitalize the rising opportunities in such as increasing air connectivity to tier 2 and tier 3 cities at fairly competitive prices, particularly offered by low cost carriers, prompted Indian consumers to consider all travel as a viable option along with business and leisure travel to such cities, which also has positive effects of online booking and further facilitated of customers which have participated. We have partnered with SpyJet for newly launched holiday vertical of SpyJet for holiday bookings and also to increase our offering. We have partnered with various insurance companies to provide extra protection to our consumers. Despite the challenges posed by the third wave of pandemic and restrictions imposed in various countries in the month of January and February 2022, Ismail continues to deliver robot annual growth in one of the most disruptive periods for travel and tourism industry. This was possible due to focused, capitalized, low-cost, no-frill approach that sets us apart amongst the other ODA in terms of profitability and cash flow and remarkably similar to the no frill airlines in India. We will continue to tap to growth opportunities, not just in air segment, but in non-air segment as well. There we have made few of acquisition announcements in FY22. Ismatrip is focused on expanding its portfolio into high margin hotel and holiday package segments. The company continues to follow an asset wide model by entering into agreement with hotel API providers rather than assuming any inventory risk on its books. Further, with the help of data collected, the company stands in position to leverage suitable cross selling opportunities. The company has higher number of hotel listings as compared to the market leader. After establishing a key foothold in air ticketing industry, Ismarchip focused on expanding in non-vertical this, this year. Itself. The company strategically gained non-inorganic growth by acquiring innovative companies across various diverse travel segments and evolving into complete travel ecosystem. Ismarchip is then on its track to fill the basket from the emerging trend, that is, increasing the number of airlines and airports in India, number two, market share gained from other OTA, number three, revenues from nascent international operations, and number four, which is expansion of hotels and tour booking. As a result, Isma Trip is set to continue its dream run of delivering consistent profits while supporting the revival of travel ecosystem. With the new avenues of growth, from non-air segments and companies continue to focus on financial and operational efficiency, the company will focus on continuing to generate long-term sustainable value for customers, partners, and investors. Now let me speak about our performance and highlights for the quarter and the year of FY22. We had a remarkable year of FY22 with the profit up by 72.2%, 2 rupees 105.7 crores as against to the net profit of 61.4 crores in the corresponding year. Further, the FY22 gross booking revenue stood at 3,715 crores, which was again up by 74.6% on year-on-year -year basis, generating strong and sustainable growth to its various stakeholders. Consistent annual performance across business continues to gain market share based on increased margins and commissions and enhanced operational 
efficiency, which enabled us to perform exceptionally well on all fronts. In year FY22, our air segment grew by 57% and 13% in quarter 4 of FY22. We have been able to sell 70.85 lakh air segments in FY22. We have witnessed strong demand and with our constant customer engagement, customer acquisition and marketing initiatives, we have been able to inch up our market share in air segments considerably. Our hotel line stood, our, our hotel line sold has seen a jump of 136% to 1.3 lakhs in FI22 as compared to 55,000 in FI21. We have achieved a new height in our hotel night booking in FI22 and are confident of future growth in this segment. With our competitive pricing, wide offerings across hotels and continued value accelerated acquisition. In train, bus, others, club together, we grew by 157% in FI22 and 59% for quarter four of FI22. Given the recovery of travel and tourism has enabled high growth in booking trains and bus segments. Our adjusted revenue for FY22 was 400 crores, which was up by 102% year-on-year basis and 98.4 crores against 100.1 crores for quarter one of FY21. EBITDA for FY22 stood at 146.8 crores as compared to 87.5 crores for FI21, which was again up by 57.7% year-on-year basis. Profit after tax for FI22 stood at 105.7 crores as compared to 61.4 crores for FI21, which was again up by 72.2%. And for, and for quarter of FI22, despite the Omicron wave infected quarter, it stood at 23.2 crores as compared to 30.5 crores for quarter 4 of FI21. With this, I open the floor for discussion. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question? May please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Praveen from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Thank Praveen, you for taking your line is unmuted. Yeah. Uh, am I audible? Hello? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yes, Praveen, you are audible. Yeah. Uh, Ashwiji, you are also on the line? Yes, I'm on the line. Okay. So, my first question is uh, related to the uh, GVR. Uh, uh, booking revenue. So, uh, if I look at on the sequential basis, it's uh, uh, you know I can understand because of uh, Omicron uh, may the first half of the quarter uh, impacted, but it's a uh, down. And as well as I can see that uh, your net revenue the percentage of a GBR, the percentage terms has also gone down. So, can you uh, give us some color what all apart from the Omicron has in uh, these numbers? Absolutely. See, uh, Praveen, if you look at it, um, you know, if you see that our discounts, the discounts which we gave for this particular quarter must have also gone down. And our gross margin consists of revenue from operations and discounts. So by nature, since the discount went up, that is why, uh, you know, you, you are able to see the gross margins also go down a bit. But another important point to note is that as we reduce the discounts, we just, uh, you know, you, you all are aware of that in the cases when people avail discounts, we charge convenience fees as well. 
So in this particular quarter, there was less discount given and hence less convenience was collected from consumers, which basically accounted for, you know, having a slightly lower, a slightly lower margin. Also, because of COVID-19, which was completely unexpected, we missed our target and because of it, there was some reduction in gross discount, in gross commission. Okay, so basically there is a reduction in the discount and that's why uh, uh, the numbers were on the lower side. So uh, the way forward, uh, can you give us some, in like uh, for a net revenue, how much of the, uh, you know. Praveen, your uh, audio is breaking up. Uh, okay, uh, am I audible now? Fine. Yes, sir. please go ahead. Yeah. yeah, so uh, just to, uh, you know, just a question on that, that uh, uh, as a net revenue after even discount, uh, how much of the, uh, you know, commission margin uh, we can look forward to the way ahead? I think airlines are actually more aggressive in selling and offering target-based commission. And we set up our targets slightly higher for the quarter, not anticipating COVID wave free to come. And that is why, uh, you know, we might have missed some targets and because of which overall there was a reduction of around 1.2%. Uh, but we, the current quarter is going extremely strong and we look forward to meet, meeting our targets. It is nothing to do with the higher fare in the market, like a margin to go, uh, your net revenue as a person of a GBR to go down? The targets are on the basis of volumes, not on the basis of revenues. Okay, okay. Uh, also, can you talk more on the uh, market share on the, you know, turn on Q basis? Uh, is that uh, moving uh, in the, you know, you are gaining or you are the losing side? How is the market share in the year travel uh, going for you? So, we believe that the market share is only rising up for us. Uh, since the last four years, and the trend continues. If you see that the GBR, despite the pandemic, did not fall dramatically. From 1,293 crores for the last quarter, it came to about 1,170-odd crores. So that should give you confidence that the bookings are going in the right direction. So our overall market share should be north of 10% for the overall market, and for the, for the online market should be north of 20%. Okay. And also, is it possible to share the new year uh, entities number? Like, Sorry to interrupt, Praveen, your voice is breaking up. Uh, uh, is it possible to share, uh, you know, newly acquired entities, uh, any number, like uh, Traviate or uh, SP Hotel, uh, how much of the uh, sales generated or a margin? So, so basically, uh, Traviate deal is not complete yet. For Spree and YOLO, we have we have successfully acquired these companies, and uh, I think for uh, for YOLO, uh, the number started coming from March onwards, and for pre probably from January onwards. So both the companies are looking very strong, uh, and we are, we are looking forward to grow along with them. I, I so will not be able to from give any number specifically. Sorry. For three, three uh, started from December last year. Uh, am I correct, Ashish? Mm -hmm. Ashish, you will have to unmute yourself to speak. Uh, but I remember, we started from December last year and uh, Yolo started from March this year. Mm -hmm. Because I can see that your hotel contribution is continuously from three quarters going down. Sorry? Uh, I can see that uh, your hotel, like uh, apart from the air ticketing, hotel numbers is uh, continuously on the downtrend from the three quarters. Uh, this particular quarter number went down primarily for the entire industry because of the Omicron, which happened. So, you know, this quarter you will have to just take blip in the time as a moment. We are extremely bullish about our hotel segment and the way we are running our hotel business. Uh, if you see from, compared to the last year, uh, we have, we have gone up by 136%. So for this particular quarter, because of the Omicron, you will have to excuse, but otherwise we feel very comfortable with our hotel product. No. Okay.
Thank you. Thank you for taking my questions. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. That is on the line of Jens Vargis from Earthwise India. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Prashant. Uh, can you hear me? Hello? Your, your audio is also not that clear. One second. Can you hear me now? Excuse me, sir. I'll request you to use a handset mode while speaking, Mr. Varghese. Can you hear me now? Uh, sir, please use a handset mode, not the speakerphone. Uh, okay, one second. Hello? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, Prashant, can you hear? I can hear you now. I mean, it's still very ruffled, but we'll try to make sense of it. Please go ahead. Okay. So, uh, what is the outlook for your hotel segment? You know, how much percentage of revenues it can capture? You know, by or uh, say by FI twenty five. Couldn't hear your question. Uh, yeah, I just want to know your outlook on hotel segment. I mean, how much percentage it can capture as a percentage of revenue? You know, by FI twenty five. So, basically, I can tell you the effort which we are taking to grow our hotel segment. Uh, we want to basically introduce our hotel APIs to the B2B travel agent network as well and also to the corporate. That's a new initiative which we are taking. And, you know, with the acquisition of Spree, we can also strengthen our hotel product and offer consumers who are flying, uh, you know, Spree room night along with the flight. So we are, we, are, we are really focused on adding more avenues, adding more hotels, adding more consolidators so that our prices go down and our consumer experience becomes better. Uh, from last year, we have grown by 136%. We look forward to have growth at least in double digits, if not triple digits, for the next couple of years. Okay, so that will obviously continue to improve my consolidated EBITDA market going forward. That is correct. Okay. And uh, when you say that OTA, you know, can offer better discounts, uh, you know, than captive, why is that so? See, uh, as, as an OTA, we can be tied with banks, we tie up with credit card companies to offer them, you know, additional set of customers, not just for flights, but for hotels, for banks, uh, for, for uh, buses, for trains. And that is why some portion of companies, some portion of discounts are sponsored by the banks and the credit card companies and also the digital payment companies for that matter. So as an OTA, we are in better position to negotiate with, with, uh, with these banks digital payment because we are serving more than one product to the, to the consumers. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Vedic Bafta from Monarch Network Capital Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Prashant. Uh, I had a question regarding your employee cost, which I can see that it has increased in this quarter. If, uh, I can see that from the last quarter, so it has increased from 6.9 crores to 9 uh, to 9.3 crores and YOY also like around 55%. So what's the major reason behind this? The, the major reason behind it is the addition of new employees which have come from our acquired subsidiary and also because of the increment which they got, our increment cycle works on December. So in this, uh, you know, in December we give increments and that is why in January you are able to see impact of it. So it's the increment which uh, which company uh, company cycle runs in December month, and also primarily the reason uh, primarily the reason was basically uh, the acquisition of new subsidiaries. Okay, so I have a next question also. I can see that your debt has also increased. So why is that? Uh, Ashish. Yeah, because our delivery also increasing, yeah. and uh, our debtors mainly uh, relate to the receivables from oh, the B two B customers. Mr. Ashish Bansal, we are not able to hear you clearly. Ashish, you are not audible at all. 
अशी जी असं अशी जी यु हॅव टू प्रॉब्लेम डिस्कनेक्ट अँड कनेक्ट बॅक अगेन युअर वॉइस इज रिअली नॉट ऑडिबल ऑपरेटर कॅन यू प्लीज हेल्प आशी जी आशी जी यूज अदर फोन टू वॉट एव्हर बट युअर नॉट ऑडिबल मधी अनि अदर क्वेश्चन इफ मे आय टेक yeah just one uh, one question to uh, mr prashant that is uh, what is your outlook i mean i know the uh, like looking all around uh, travel sector is booming but in terms of i know you don't give explicit guidance but in terms of basic understanding of where the you know the company is heading uh, what would you like to call out for fy23 so sure. uh, so basically uh, you know as an overall guidance i can say that you know the best time for the travel and tourism in uh, in india are ahead of us you know the pent up demand is extremely strong and is extremely real despite the despite the fares go up we have seen flights and hotels go chock a block so which which kind of gives credibility of how eagerly people are looking forward to travel and given that there are new airports and the new aircrafts which are coming in uh and ota industry getting more and more preference over the uh, over the direct captive ones or the travel agent in fact i would say that the ota industry is a beneficiary of a covid in the long run because it has it has made people to use things online rather than go to the travel agent traditional travel agent as they used to do earlier so overall i think uh, my sense is that we are in a very very strong situation to capitalize uh capitalize all the all the great things which are ahead of us and another thing is that uh, as you all may have heard that uh, there is a lot of uh, noise around venture capital money uh, which is going to basically not be as freely available as what it was earlier but right. right so that is in fact that is in fact a music to the smartest here because we have never been dependent on vc or pe money so if if that is the case for the next couple of years Ismartrip is going to be a beneficiary of it because most of our competitors are dependent on them, and if they are going to have cash scarcity, we will be able to perform much much better. So that these are the things which I am really looking forward for the next couple of years. Our tag has only increased in the last three years from 33 crores in FY20 to 61 crores in FY21 to 106 crores, 105.7 crores now. in fy22 we look forward for a stronger march uh, you know marching forward and uh, continue the growth uh, one more piece of information which i would want to share is that we are we are quite bullish on using our technology and our operation the leanest of the leanest operations which we have created in india imagine the kind of value it can give to the consumers which are living in a living in proper for that matter in dubai us or uk the the kind of competitive advantage we will have while fighting the other people who are based out of there would be humongous and that is why at isma trade we are quite quite excited about our global expansion uh madhu uh, i have two more questions if i may uh, if i am allowed one is uh, your gbr of course on a very low base uh, shot up by close to 75% uh, year on year for fy22 so Uh, what kind of ballpark gbr growth should we be working with well i would want to see the continuation of the 3 percentage or at least in double digits uh, in the higher double digit side uh, maru for the for the coming year uh, given that there, there would not be a huge disruption of any any more covid wave or any other uh, calamity Uh, but otherwise i see the pent up demand to be very strong and uh, the industry to be very well right and is not just to be in perfect position to capitalize on the gain uh, if, if, if i if i just sorry uh, if i miss day uh, maybe yeah, i'll come back on to the I'll question thank you yeah i'll come thank back thank you thank you uh, uh, is mr ashish again on the line uh, yes sir yes uh, ashish ji uh, yeah i think maybe it's likely better okay thank you. the next question 
The next question is on the line of Anmol Garg from DAM Capital. Please go ahead. Hey, hi, Prashant. Hi, Ashish. Uh, just had a few questions. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes no, you're loud and clear. Yeah, sure. So just had a few questions. Firstly, if you can give some outlook on the marketing expenses for next uh, year, uh, are we expecting the marketing expenses? I'm talking about including discounts uh, to increase uh, further from here on. And if you can specify that uh, how much uh, per, uh, in uh, absolute terms or in the percentage terms we are looking or planning to increase the same. Uh, my second question is uh, on the advances to the airlines. If you can uh, give us some trend how the advances to the airline has changed and also some outlook on how that will be for the next few years, uh, for the next year particularly. Uh, okay. I have a third question. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, no, but I think let, let me just answer these two questions. Uh -huh. So first uh, question is basically the outlook on percentage change on marketing and discount. So I for, for the marketing, I can see discount is slightly more variable. It is more industry specific. I, I personally believe that the discounts probably will remain the same or go slightly lower because because of the thing which I just told you that the venture capital firms are pulling back uh, in investing in startups and the companies because of which I think that the discount portion probably will remain the same or probably go down. In terms of marketing, I think it could probably be 20 bits plus or minus of what it is. As a particular percentage of GMV, it will continue. It is pretty stable since last couple of years and we would want to continue it that way. It might, it might go up or down by 20 bits, but it will not be a significant change. That's the answer to your question number one. Uh, your question, uh, second question was, can you please just repeat? Yes, so my second question was the outlook on the uh, advances that we give to the airlines uh, yes, so to maintain our ticket. In the last year, in the last year, the additional, in the entire last year, uh, you know, the additional advance which was given to the airline was only 40 crores put together. So, you know, we believe that uh, that's a very fair number. Uh, Ashiji, if you want to talk more about it. Yes, sir. We gave the additional advance of uh, around 40 crore to the airline. And uh, these deposit, it helped us to get the better commission from the airlines. So that's why the company, for better fund management, they pay the amount in advance. Sure. And uh, is there something of an outlook that we can give uh, is, is, is the amount that we are expecting to increase going right? As and when the GMB increase, the advanced deposit also increase. So uh, in the same way, I think uh, we believe the advance may go. Sure. Uh, and just uh, two bookkeeping sort of questions. Uh, is mm -hmm. that uh, uh, if you can give an uh, outlook on uh, the receivable days uh, uh, going ahead, what can be the receivable days that we can expect going ahead? And secondly, uh, what can be a sustainable OCF to EBITDA that we can expect going ahead? Thank you. That's it from mine. Our receivable days, uh, 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 see, uh, if you compare with our GMV, it is, one and uh, possibly one um, one and a half percent of our GMV. So, uh, I, uh, it's uh, around ten days or so. Or so. And as far as uh, operating cash flow, you are talking about, right? Uh, so, what is the question? So, if you can give that, what can be a, a comfortable level for o of OCF to EBITDA that we are planning to sustain for the next few years? See, uh, if you uh, see our operating cash flow uh, this time, it is on negative side because we use the funds for the business. And in the uh, long run, we are, we are of the view that uh, all EBITDA uh, will go to the cash uh, or, or our EBITDA will go to the cash or the new acquisitions. So it will be uh, difficult for us to predict the level of uh, OCF vis-a-vis -vis EBITDA. Sure, sure. Thanks. Uh, that's it from mine. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rana Quora from AUM Advisors. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, Rana. Uh, yeah, sure. I uh, I didn't understand. Uh, we have sold more tickets from 18 lakhs to 20 lakhs for the current quarter. 
on Q on Q basis. Then while the revenue from operations is lower for us, which has reduced from 86 crores to 60 crores for uh, on Q on Q basis. So basically, the commitments which we make uh, for basically the target, the target-based uh, commitments are variable. The targets get decided at the beginning of the quarter. And on the basis of understanding, not, not expecting COVID safety to come, we, we anticipated our targets to be slightly higher and we agreed upon them. So it, 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 it is not directly comparable to the year before because that time the targets were lower. So did we say, uh, so is it something like we had committed lower, which is why our variable from the airlines was lower? No, no, no. It's not that we committed lower. The target, we missed the target because of the Omicron. And also the other reason, as I mentioned earlier, which is that, you know, because we gave lesser discounts, we collected lesser conveniency. And which is, the convenience piece is an integral part of, uh, you know, uh, uh, the gross discount, uh, the, uh, the gross uh, uh, commission. So if, if you see both ways that uh, the gross commissions are basically revenue from operations plus discount. So because since the discount decreased, the gross commissions you see as decreased. And then on top of it, since the discounts were low, we collected lesser commission, uh, we, we collected lesser convenience fees. And then on top of it, we missed some of the targets because of which, uh, because of the COVID, because of which uh, the overall impact was around 1.4 to 1.5%. Okay. So, uh, can you, uh, is it, is it, uh, you know, is it possible that you can quantify to us that how much had you committed and how much, from what mark has been missed it with the airline? In terms of number of these are these are, uh, these, are the, these are confidential terms and conditions between us and the airlines. These are the competitors' uh, sensitive information. And uh, so, uh, okay, not that sense. If you can, you know, just help us that if uh, we had achieved our uh, committed numbers, how much uh, improvement in terms of revenues would we have seen in the current quarter? The current quarter is going very strong, and we feel, uh, we feel, I mean, unless any big thing happens uh, for the remaining months, uh, remaining months, the time duration, we feel that we, we feel confident of achieving the target. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shrenik Bhandari from Yadnya Academy Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yes, Mr. Shrenik, please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, you mentioned that uh, we haven't met the targets for this quarter. So have we been able to renegotiate the targets with the airlines? Um, I couldn't hear your question, your voice. Uh, hello. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you mentioned that uh, in the uh, last quarter, uh, the company uh, failed to meet its target. So, have we be have we been able to uh, reduce the targets, or the targets are same and we expect better performance? So, targets are variable. Uh, it's a, you know, it, it, this is the terms and conditions between the BNS, and I cannot talk about it. Uh, but they are variable, and every quarter they change. Okay. Uh, another question is. Uh, if uh, the currently the fares have uh, flight fares have been increased due to various reasons, uh, so and uh, there's an impact on the GPR. Uh, when the uh, when if we expect the fares to go down, how much uh, does it affect our adjusted revenue? Uh, couldn't understand your question properly. It was it was breaking. Your voice is breaking. Uh, I think hello. Yeah, in our business, if the CBR is increased because of fare also, our commission also better on that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Bandari, are you done with your question? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraints, that was our last question. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Prashant Petty for his closing comments. 
well, well, firstly, thank you everyone for for being part of the conference, and I apologize for uh, the the bad line connection which we've had in between. But to conclude, I would like to highlight that Ismatris continues to strengthen its position with no convenience fees model, which is aided to become, which has helped us to become one of the fastest growing OTA, robust cost control, making us one of the most profitable companies, and wide distribution network supported by the hybrid platform. We are confident in our goal to focus on expanding the hotel and holiday packages, the railway ticketing operations, and leveraging existing travel agents in tier two and tier three cities. And we continue to focus on corporate booking and drive business to keep the building business and presence in the sectors like bus, train, travel, and the other sectors, and increase our profitability in the future. So thank you everyone for joining us. I hope we have been able to answer all your queries. In case if you require any further clarification, you may reach out to Orient Capital, our investor relations partner. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of East My Trip Limited, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.